everybody, I'm B. Jemime, aka The Terrible Australian, the co-host of Super Podcast, and welcome to my fifth edition of my 2012 Melbourne International Film Festival video reviews. Uh, for this one I'll be reviewing the horror sequel Wreck Free Genesis, and as well as the, the animated family horror film Paranorman. So let's get right into it. First up, Wreck Free Genesis. This is the third installment of the Wreck series. And this one tells the story of two characters by the name of Coldo and Clara, who one day, who at their wedding day, a zombie outbreak happens when one of the guests happens to happens to be the um, the veterinarian who was infected by the dog who had the the virus that w from the building in the first two films, if <laughs> if that makes any sense. So. He's infected, and of course, a zombie outbreak happens, and basically, Clodo and Clara and many of their guests have to tr try to survive the night and try to kill as many zombies as they possibly can. So basically, that's the initial plot. If I'm, if I sounded a bit bad, I'm sorry about that. But um, now, what makes um, Wreck Free uh, completely different and unique when compared to the first two films of the series is that it's a complete 180 in both style, tone, and even filmmaking. Um, for ex well, if you if you're a big fan of the Wreck films like I am, uh, you would know that the first two films were found footage horror films. They were scary, they were intense, and they used the found footage element really effectively. For this one, other than the first. 15 minutes of the film where it's just ha where it, there's two characters uh, video taping the wedding but once the zombie outbreak happens the found footage element is basically thrown out the window and it become and then the film is shot like as a straightforward normal horror film and and tonally it's a lot more comedic than the first two. There's a lot of sort of jokes, both sight gags, dialogue jokes, and sort of funny character situations. I guess whether you like the film or not will come down to whether you can accept those, these new elements in this film, that it is trying to do something different when compared to the first two films, or you don't. And I can understand somebody not liking this one because, like I said, it's a complete 180 um, for the series. And But overall, I, I did have fun with it. Like it, it. I wasn't bored by this film at all. Like I did have a lot of fun time. And, and I'm a big zombie fan, so I enjoy anything that has um, zombies in it. And I had a lot of fun with this. And the performances are all good. Like the two actor, the lead actors who play the roles of uh, Clara and Coldo, they're both really good, and the supporting cast are all fine, and I will say though, even though the film is, you know, shot like a normal film, and it actually looks spectacular, like visually it looks fantastic, great cinematography, and while it's not scary, it does ramp up the gore factor when compared to the first two films, like it is a very gory film, like I mean, maybe not too gory, but uh, it has a lot of sort of fun zombie gore and kills and all that, which I really enjoyed. Um, it's very it's fast paced; it only goes for about eighty minutes, and it's just fun. That's what. And what I did like about the film is that it it has this um, we don't give a crap attitude to the supporting characters. Like you get all other than the first our two leads all the supporting characters in the film, basically you're introduced to them and then they just basically kill them off right away. Um, or at least not long after they're introduced. Which, I give the film credit to doing that. And... But like, there are elements of it that, that don't work. Like, there are some sort of jokes and gags and all that that uh, don't really work at all. Um, there's, for some bizarre reason, there's a character in the movie who dresses up like Spongebob Squarepants for most of it, and 
it's kind of weird like the humor is a bit wacky at times and doesn't quite work and um, there was one aspect of the third film that I did really like and that is that it, the film actually goes a little bit more further with um, the mythology of the zombies in the, in the film um, now if you have seen the first two rec films you'll know for a fact that the zombies aren't actually your traditional zombies there's a little bit more to them than meets the eye but I won't say what it is because you know there are people out there who probably haven't um, seen the first two films but I will say this one actually uh, adds a little more to the mythology that I found really interesting and I actually dug that aspect and um, and I can't wait to see when the fourth film comes out um, which will be directed by the other co-director of the first two rec films, uh, Jaime Balaguerro, and it'll be interesting to see where the series goes from this third film. Um, but overall, it is a fun film. Uh, it's decent. Um, it's not on the level of the first two films, but for what it is, I enjoyed it, and if I had to give it a rating out of five, I'd give it a solid three. So... Yeah, so if you're a fan of the first two, I'd say check it out, but um, don't expect it to be on the level of the first two films. Alright, uh, moving on, I'll go to my next film, uh, Paranorman. Now, this film is set in a small town, and it tells the story of a, of a lonely boy by the name of Norman, who is voiced by Australian actor Cody Smith McPhee. Now, his family and the entire town sort of look down upon him because they they see him as weird and dip and unusual and the 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 reason for that is is because he has the ability to speak to the dead and and everybody makes fun of him because of that and they think oh he's just making it all up and he's lying and then one day his uncle who's voiced by John Goodman, who happens to also share a similar gift to him, puts him in charge in protecting the town from the curse of a witch who was killed by the townspeople uh, 300 years ago. And on the day of the anniversary of the witch's death, on which uh, the curse is supposed to come to life, Norman makes a mistake and the town is overrun by zombies and so it's up to Norman and and a group of his friends have to stop the the zombie outbreak from destroying the town um, there's a lot more to the story than that but I but I'll just leave it at the basics of that and I will I will say that I really really enjoyed this film it is a definite love letter to horror films I kind of love this movie from the very beginning because the film opens up with sort of a grindhouse style, our feature presentation um, uh, little logo at the beginning, and then it and it, before even the credits begin, it starts off with a John Carpenter esque score, which I absolutely dug and thought was completely awesome, and also the the also the voice cast from everybody is great. Cody Smith McPhee does another great job and the supporting cast which includes like I said before John Goodman but also uh, Casey Affleck, Anna Kendrick, um, Leslie Mann uh, and many many others all do really good work and it's just a fun movie it's uh, it's funny it's creepy and the animation is absolutely beautiful. It's a great looking film. And I also happened uh, for, for the, the screening I went to, it was in 3D. And the 3D was really good as well. I wouldn't say the 3D is used in a big spectacular way, but it's done quite well in this film nonetheless. And, it, and it's just a really fun film. I really, really enjoyed it. And I think if you enjoyed other sort of um, similar themed sort of animated sort of family horror-esque films like uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Corpse Bride, or Coraline. You'll definitely dig this one. And and to me, like I said before, it is a love letter to horror films. And it, it was just a 
great watch. And also the film has a great little message as well, which I won't go into because it kind of goes in the spoiler territory, but it's done effectively well. And also the, um, the last scene in the film is done really good as well. And, um, and it was actually surprisingly moving it as well. And I definitely recommend everyone to check out Paranorman when it comes out, um, especially if you're a horror fan. And I definitely believe you'll get a lot out of this film and you'll enjoy it a lot. If I had to give this one a rating out of five, I'd give it a, a solid four stars. It's a fun film and I definitely recommend it. Well, that's the end of my fifth edition of my um, Myth video reviews. Uh, keep a lookout for my sixth edition in which I'll be reviewing the horror remake Maniac and as well as Michael Haneke's brand new film Amore. So keep a lookout for the for that one. Alright, I'll see you later. Goodbye.